So what happened within the European Union? Well, within the European Monetary Union, and that is what I want to talk about, in 2000, we combined our currencies into one common currency. So one common currency means that countries are bound together within that particular union without having flexibilities of depreciation or appreciation of currency. So what that means, I will tell you in a minute. Now, since 2000, countries in Europe have developed very differently if it comes to reform their institutions and to react to this world challenge. Let me take three countries as examples. Greece, no, sorry, not Greece. I don't want to talk about this. Italy, France, and Germany. Germany went through a very uh, costly unification in 1990 um, between the early 90s and the mid-2000s, Germany was basically in stagnation. Economic growth was very low, businesses closed down, and uh, people were actually very badly off. That was the time when the UK had the decade of the last century, of, of the decade of the, the entire post-war period, uh, when Spain boomed because of an asset bubble, uh, and many other European countries did actually very well. Now, what happened also over that period was that Germany implemented very extensive changes in institutions and labor markets. As a result, and I'll show you the second graph, which I think is very vital to understand what is going on at the moment. As a result, real wages in Germany started to spread. So the wage distribution in Germany spread dramatically to the extent that wages at the 15th percentile in real terms started to decrease. So that means people were actually worse off and that started <coughs> already in the mid 1990s. So I could show you a graph which goes until 2011 and that process has actually continued. Wages at the top always kind of go away but this is very important to understand. So for German industry, and why that is the case, and why I believe this cannot be replicated to the extent it happened in Germany and other European countries, and that is a real problem. I can tell you a little bit later if I have some time left. So what this means is that Germany increased its competitiveness compared to other economies. So what is competitiveness? Let me show you this graph, or let me show you this graph. So this is unit labor cost. That's the labor cost, which is, um, this is the labor cost for producing one unit of output. So that is basically telling you how expensive it is for firms to produce output which is traded on the international market. What you see in this graph is that unit labor cost since the early 2000s, and that's when the euro started to bound all these countries together, has relatively decreased in Germany, then remained relatively stable, and these are projections of the OECD for the following year, so just look until, uh, just consider this graph until 2011, and in recent years start to increase very slightly. On the other hand, labor cost, unit labor cost in countries like Spain, Italy, and also France have continued to increase quite dramatically. So unit labor cost to some extent translate into competitiveness. Competitiveness is given in this graph here. So competitiveness in 1999 is normalized to be the same for all countries. And let's just concentrate on the development. Competitiveness in Germany relative to Italy and Spain has dramatically increased. So how do we read these figures? If you look at this particular point in time, 2009, this is Germany, and this is Italy. So in 2009, relative to 1991, the cost to produce a car for Fiat has, relative to Germany, increased by 40%. So for Fiat today, it is relatively seen to a car manufacturing company in Germany, 40% more expensive 
to produce a car relative to 1999. So that is dramatic. So that means Italy lost dramatically in terms of competitive. France is not quite as dramatic, so it is moving relatively in unity with Germany, but there were some other problems about France, to which I can come uh, when we have a little bit more time.